Hi, I'm Reimagine. Um, I make games on Scratch, and I thought it'd be good to give back to the community and make some tutorials to help um, new Scratchers learn how to code. So in this tutorial, um, this will probably be five parts, I'm going to show you how to make a basic game. This is mostly intended for beginners, and later on I may make more advanced courses. Here's a little preview of what we'll make. Okay, let's start. First we're going to want to make a new costume, um, so let's call this player. Um, let's delete the cat. Then I think we'll just make a small square. Let's get a nice color down here. What I just did is I switched from this where it has preset colors to here where you can choose more accurately a nice color. And then over here, instead of outlining when you make the shape, it'll make a solid shape. So let's choose that. I'll use these squares right here to um, make this shape, the square. That looks good. We'll zoom back out. Okay, now it's time to start coding. So this is going to be the player for our game. So as you saw in the preview, our game is sort of a maze game where the player tries to get to the end as fast as they can. So for our player, we want something that'll move smoothly, um, maybe with the arrow keys, and that can detect the walls and detect the finishing point. So let's call our sprite player, and then let's go to events and start with when the flag is clicked. Later in the series I'm going to show you um, how to like connect all the sprites together with a variable. So for now we're just going to ignore that um, and just go right through the script. So when start is clicked we want um, to make a forever loop. Alright, when most people start with Scratch, they generally use the motion blocks in here, in this panel, um, which is good, it's nice and simple, but I find it doesn't produce as much of a pleasing effect. It doesn't produce that nice, smooth, buttery motion. So to do that, we want to go to data and make two variables. Our first one we'll call x speed, and our next variable we'll call y speed. Okay, we'll just hide those quickly, we don't need them. Um, so what this is going to allow us to do is um, create a variable which we can add to and subtract to, and then change our position by that. So you'll see what I mean. So go to control, and then we want some if blocks. We'll drag in four. Now we want to go to sensing. And this is where we get the arrow keys to work. So drag in key space pressed. You want to change that to up arrow and then copy it. Down arrow. Left arrow. And right arrow. Okay, now what we want to do is bring in the second block down here called change the variable. So we'll bring that into each one. Okay, and once we've done that, up and down on this axis is the Y axis. So we want to change the Y speed, so that's good. And then across, left and right, is the X axis. So we want to make that X axis here, X speed. Okay, so next you're going to want to make up positive, so we can make it 1. It doesn't really matter what number, something around there, you can mess around. I like to go with 1. Down arrow, negative, so we make it negative one, or again, any number you like. 
you can mess around. Left arrow, as you can see if you look at the x value here, when you go left it goes negative, so we want to make that negative. And then right arrow is positive since you're going to the right, so we want x speed to be 1. Alright, next you want to go to motion and get change y by and change x by. And then you want to go to data and bring in your two variables. I'll explain why we're doing this after I've set it up. Next you want to bring in set y speed to and another one. You want to change one to x speed. And now this is where the magic happens. So you want to go to operators over here and bring in the times block. You can copy these variables here by right clicking and clicking duplicate. It's faster than going over here and going back to data. Duplicate, bring one in here and the other here. And these match, which is good. And then you want to put in a decimal between 0.5 and 0.9. I'll go with 0.7. Okay, now we've got a working thing. So let me explain how this works to you. When you click start, if you click the up arrow, you'll see it move up. And when I lift off, it slows down. But it's not a jittery stop and start movement. It's more smooth. It's hard to describe, but when you let off of the bottom arrow, the particle continues to move for a little bit after you've done so. Whereas if you used the motion blocks here, just by themselves, as soon as you let off the arrow, it would stop. This produces a more pleasing effect to the eye, and that's why we've done this. So now if you move your character around, it looks good. So looking back at our code, when you're moving the particle, y speed is increasing, but this is also limiting it, so it doesn't keep going and keep going exponentially. When you let go of the arrow key, this is no longer in play this is no longer changing y speed. And then this takes over, has all the control, and sets y speed to y, the current y speed times 0.7, which means it's slowly getting smaller and smaller. And that's what allows that movement to look smooth. And then this here is just making sure that a variable is getting translated to the movement in the particle. All right, thank you for watching. In the next episode, we're going to design a backdrop and allow the player to interact with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.